now by Lewis Martin. I want my lines to be like dreams, dreaming of dreams, dreaming. He read in the basement of a small Paris cafe. The audience was responding enthusiastically, but he nevertheless felt tired. I want my lines to be the song of songs, pitch perfect, a frequency divine. He read passionately, but at the same time, he wanted the whole thing to be over. I want my lines to be like first love, hearts beating, lips pressed, mouths mashing and eating each other. He could see the rough eyes of the woman in the front row of listeners, yet he felt his own energy subsiding. What was wrong with him? Would he have the strength to walk on stage when he finished reading, or would he just stand there waiting for someone to lead him away? And I want my lines to tell the whole story from beginning to end, joy and madness, murder and gladness. What would he do if he could not move after he read the last line? What a way to end his short career as a poet. They were good lines, maybe the best he had ever written, but he was burned out in need of a change. Poetry had consumed him. He had given everything to poetry, and poetry had taken everything from him, leaving him empty. The train nudged out of Gar Dausterlitz in Paris. He had done this trip before, and it had always recharged him. In seven hours to lose, in another two over the height of the Pyrenees Mountains, La Tour de Caron, then Puchinda crossed the border in Spain. But this time he found himself in a sleeping car converted to a second-class passenger car with five other occupants. None spoke a word, and all but one were staring at that wrecking ball of personal communication, the smartphone. But at least he was spared the word cool, meaning the same in French as it does in English, and genial, the French equivalent of the English word Awesome. He began thinking about poetry while staring out the window at the passing landscape. It was mostly lush farm lands dotted by an occasional village. The little groves of trees on nearly every farm pleased his eyes. He tried to shut off poetry but had trouble stopping the flow. Green between houses, spouses espousing, love sousing, lush green grass. What did that mean? Field falls, fresh cut sluts, hay new blooms doomed to blades of sharp steel, ruts of plows, sows, sibling, sidling. Did he just like the sound that Land river leaning, bridge crossing, tipsy train tossing from side to side, and a quick look down in the murky green water that does not look back. Did that mean anything, anything at all? No frown fretting, poetic fever abating, nonsense aiding and abetting, nonsense fleeing the jaws of reason. Have you lost your mind, he wondered. And another town crossing, turmoil tossing, people, factory, furnace of fornication. Too many ING's, verbal impressionism has limits, but they. Steeple down, down, not down, round midnight. Marry, marry yourself, fool, but 
don't ask why, because the leaves are green and the bloom car has boomed its final boom. The organ grinder, having released his monkey from a life of slavery, plays for free. Free at last, monkey lives the monkey dream. And your dream dreamer isn't any better, because we're out in the country now, gone fishing. Care left behind to care for itself. And the land is gently rising, devising a plan to ascend. Great granite peaks ahead. Don't look back, life's nothing but a tragedy, on stage and off. Oh, he knew that story, backwards and forwards. And down and round, bend after bend, rush of river running below, better with a cow, barnyard bird scratching, hatching, firewood stack blow of napping canvas cover, blue hay merry hope, and eternal suffering. Monet quit manaying the day away. Then down around another bend. The end is near all is fear and free beer. Then the valley belows, the train straight and slows, then comes to a stop. No more ration, nudging out of stations. Then the end of one journey and maybe the beginning of another. Who knows or cares? Because and then and then because. Start Making sense, bro, because the journey is coming to an end. Free beer? Between which a small girl with a long braid is waving and hugging, her mother standing nearby in the poetry man, fettered in letters, savoring syllable sounds, becomes just an ordinary person, teary-eyed, nowling on to whatever hand he can. The mummers to stretch themselves out like serpent stars, hear himself saying in the basement of Cafe Boudinaire. But not right now, he told himself. He was tired, broken, he needed a way to put himself back together, but there would be no final act other than this one.